Hi, I'm out on my bike today and today I'm riding my hybrid bike and I'm doing that because it's a bit wet and I want to do some gravel riding and I want to also ride on the road and I thought it's an example of how I can make an analogy to hybrid beam forming in particular let's think about the word hybrid so we'll talk about what exactly hybrid beam forming is in a minute but let's think about the analogy first so this bike is a hybrid of a mountain bike and a road bike. And so it's one bike that's trying to do two things and we're choosing to design it that way. And that's the opposite of the hybrid in, in hybrid beam forming. In hybrid beam forming, we are forced to use two types of beam forming because of physics, because of the frequencies that we're operating at. So it's not like a mountain bike which is being designed for off-road, rough terrain, needs lots of gears and suspension, and merging that with a road bike which needs thin tyres to go fast on the tarmac. Instead, we're in hybrid beam forming, it's two different types of the same thing, trying to achieve the same goal. So let's have a look at that in more detail. So here we have one version of a hybrid beam forming structure. And the two types of beam forming are the digital beam forming and the analog beam forming. So these are both trying to achieve the same goal. So it's a hybrid of two different forms of beam forming, both trying to achieve this goal of forming beams. So in the digital beam forming, that is implemented in as a matrix multiplication in the digital domain. The analog beam forming is implemented by phase offsets in analog circuitry, just before the antennas. And why do we have to do this hybrid? Why is it that physics and the frequency demand that we need this structure? So it's not really so much our choice to have hybrid, it's more that we have to. Why is that? Well, at millimeter wave frequencies, the higher and higher frequencies, the wavelength is smaller, which means the antennas are smaller. So each antenna is not able to radiate as much energy per antenna. And that means you need more of them. You need lots of antennas. Now, if you were to have an amplifier for each antenna, then that is a lot of amplifiers. Now, first of all, that takes a lot of real estate on a chip, but it's also very difficult to implement. So instead of that, we are really move from a practical implementation point of view to try to have structures where there are fewer amplifiers than there are antennas. And so that leads us to this hybrid structure. So there are links in the description below this video for both digital beamforming and analog beamforming. So let's think about what we've got with this structure. So in this structure here, uh, we've got these three antennas being analog beamformed together. Uh, and they might be even, these antennas might even be machined out of the same piece of metal, for example. And these ones might be machined out of another piece of metal. And then they're, they're located next to each other in the transmitting device. Uh, and so, uh, for example, we could have um, a, a beam being formed by this. Let's say the user was over here, for example, that we're trying to send the signal to. Then we could have a beam being formed by analog beam being formed by these antennas here that's in the direction of that user, for example. Uh, and then we could have another uh, being formed by these antennas that are also in the direction of that user. And then we can see uh, we're going to be getting a good signal there, but even the, the offset you can see, you need to then shift and delay this signal from these signals so that they, the red and the black both add up in phase. And that is done in the digital beamforming. So that's why we need both analog beamforming and digital beamforming when we've got lots of antennas. And we sometimes call this massive MIMO. And this is the hybrid. And here's another structure, a more general structure. Let's fill this structure in. Uh, it doesn't ne necessarily have to just be that each uh, amplifier is connected to its own set of antennas, you could have a fully connected hybrid beamformer. And that's what this picture here is showing. So again, digital beamforming uh, coming out into a small number of 
amplifiers. Each amplifier could go into an analog beamformer just like here, but then we could have circuitry to connect each output from each uh, uh, amplifier to each of the transmitting antennas. So the first output goes to the first antenna, the second output goes to the second antenna where there's some circuitry to add the signals and the third one goes to the third antenna. And then we could do the same thing for the, uh, I mean, these are dot, dot, dots here. So let's look at the last one. The first output goes to the first antenna, second to the second, third to the third. And of course you can see for other, if you had other amplifiers and other data streams here, you can have this fully connected structure. What does this enable us to do? It enables us to start having multi-user systems. So we could have each of these streams coming in here could be intended for a different user. So let's say, for example, there was a user over here and the first stream uh, is intended for that user. Then it could be beam formed uh, analog here to form a beam in that direction of that user across all of the antennas. And then there might be another user over here and we could, for the red stream, be beamforming across all of those antennas to that user over here. And so now we can have multi-user structures in the hybrid beamformer. And of course, still you want to be doing digital beamforming because what you would like to have is you would like to have a null from the red beam. You would like to have a null steered in the direction of the black user and from the black user's beam, you would like there to be a null in the direction of the red user. And to achieve that, you need to do that in the digital beamforming. So the analog beamforming can form these overall beams, but you they can't just operate on themselves. You can't just make do just solely with that beam shape. You need to modify that beam shape by doing digital beamforming where you're trying to steer nulls into the directions of the other users. So that's, uh, again, the hybrid beamforming, the digital and the analog beamforming working together in this structure. So if this has given you more insights into hybrid beamforming, uh, please give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video and check out the description below where you'll find a web page with a fully categorized listing of all the videos on the channel. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos.